Welcome everybody to the big show. We are going to talk about how to get in the tire game. Tire season is coming and a lot of us aren't in the game. We're going to give you some ideas of how you can get in the game. Also, we're going to talk about the news, which the theme is murder and death. Yes. For those of you that love an, a nice mystery. And much, much more. I'm Chris Collins. This is Christian. Hello, everyone. And that's coming up right now on Service Drive Revolution. Hey. How many times has Kevin mentioned that he loves the smell of tires? 64. Yeah. <laughs> he He's loves like, the smell. He goes, I love to go into, what was it? Uh, I think he said Pet Boys. Pet Boys. <laughs> Which is not like what I think like of tires. with tires either. It's hilarious. <laughs> it is funny. Okay, I was told against my, I'm sure this is against my better judgment, to ask you, what did you do over the weekend? And evidently this is funny or something. It was, uh, it was, it was rough, Chris. Um, one of my good friends, Gilbert. Gilbert passed away this weekend. He was... Um, Have I ever met Gilbert? No. It's new, uh, Imaginary friend? Friend from back way, back the other way. Um, back the other way? <laughs> what other way? You know. Behind you, a friend behind you. You know, east. And uh, so we're all around Gilbert's hospital bed. Oh, Gilbert's in the hospital? He died in the hospital. So uh, he died because we couldn't, um, we couldn't get him a blood transfusion. We didn't know his type. And he's really limited on his speech. He's sitting there like dying slowly. It's terrible. And uh, all he kept doing is so, so thoughtful. Uh, he just kept saying, be positive. But it's so hard to do without him here anymore. Yeah, that's great. So why don't you, while we're on it, why don't you tell her, well... The hospital thing? Yeah. So, coming up next week. You have a thing. I have a thing, which I've never done before. Have you ever done, so it's a full body scan, so an MRI of your entire body. And then, so my doctor goes and meets me there. They do the scan, and then you sit there and go through it. And... Uh, yeah, so it's kind of a preventative thing, right? Where they can see. Do you have to drink a fluid or something? No, so but I, I did tell them, like, the reason why I haven't done this before is because I'm really claustrophobic. And you go you're in. You're in a the, metal tube. You're in a metal tube, yeah. right? So they prescribed me, oh, I don't, Xanax and Valium. At the, like, you take them together. So I'm going to assume that calms you down a lot then. Yeah, but well, like, what do you think I'll remember about it after when they're reviewing it? Like, My hope would be minimal to nothing. If you're, if you're knocked out, it's fine. Then you're still, right? The big thing about MRIs is you've got to be still when you're laying in those things. I had to do a brain MRI once, but never the whole body scan like this. So like NASA wanted to know why you're so funny? Or no, I had or? Um, uh, just terrible bouts of uh, migraine headaches where they would go on for days. Um, Did they find anything? No. Turned out, uh, ended up being uh, stress-related, and I don't have migraines anymore. Do you have no stress? Minimal stress compared to what I, what I was doing before. That, that was me putting the stress on myself, too. Like, I've time. learned a lot since then, I would say that. How old were you? 40. My buddy just did this, uh, somebody you know, Matt, and he gave me this piece of advice that actually made me make the appointment. He said, you close your eyes before you go in and never open your eyes and you're not claustrophobic. Like if you're, you know, sitting there, you close your eyes, you never see yourself go in the tube, you, you know, and I guess they play music or something and headphones, I don't know. But he said he never opened his eyes and he never felt claustrophobic. He was fine. So I picked up, yeah, I picked up my prescription. It's the funniest thing. There's one pill of each in the thing. Yeah. With no refill. Yeah, I assume those are probably whatever. So if I wanted to do Xanax every day, because don't people do that? Yeah, I think Xanax and Valium are no things that people are nothing. going it's for. No refills, nothing. It's just a one. Yeah, I got prescribed one pill. That's a super control. It's going to be hard substance. to get addicted to it. Once. Yeah, I think you'll be okay. Um, but yeah, so I think the first time 
I remember realizing that you were claustrophobic was uh, at the old building. So there's, there's two sets of elevators at the old building. One was the one that goes up to Don't the even 14th talk about those floor. Elevators. I got stuck in those <laughs> elevators. But you know what makes you claustrophobic is actually getting stuck in, an, in that elevator. Yeah, it totally messes you up. But, but if you got out on the 14th floor, then you went to this other auxiliary elevator to get to the roof. I would take the stairs. And every time that I'd go up to the roof with you, I'll meet you there. I'd be like, okay, here's the elevator. And you're like, see ya. Like you didn't look at the elevator. You didn't think about the elevator. People got stuck in that elevator for two hours once. And it was literally like, it felt like there was just little tiny humans in there, like pulling a, pulling a rope and making yeah, you so go up the two floors. So that building that we used to have our office in is the old AT&T building. And that building's been there a long time. And those elevators are old. Yeah. Um, definitely not confident. They break all the but, time. But yeah, there's been a couple of times where I'm like, oh yeah, that's right, he is, he is claustrophobic. I don't like being stuck in elevators. Same thing with uh, airplanes. I think that's probably why you like to be in the front. First on, first off kind of thing. Yeah, it's not my thing. So I get it, but I don't know, being stuck in a place is a scary thing, even if you're not claustrophobic. But you'll do so well. we'll see, we'll see what's going on there. Um, I hope we don't, I hope there's nothing catastrophic because if there is the next day we fly out yeah that'll be fun okay you got this big tumor but uh come back in a week yeah but i do i i feel so strongly about you that like if you need to i would operate on you like i would literally take the tumor out for you is this a joke or is this just no. you saying something look how steady my hand is yeah yeah I could do it. For those listening, because a lot of people listen. I saw a YouTube video His once. His hand was really steady. Yeah. It didn't but shake at all. Either way. Being as funny as you are and having the rep repertoire. Oh, my. French word. Of, uh, of jokes. Do you take requests? Like, when I was in a band, you would play places and people would be like, play Freebird. Yeah. But, you know, do you, uh, do you take requests? For sure. Will you tell your all-timers joke? I will. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So a guy goes to the doctor, you know, kind of doing his checkup. He's kind of getting to that, that older stage where you should, you should go in every six months and get a checkup. Me. So he does it and uh, gets all the tests done, everything like that. He's kind of sitting in the room by himself, looking at all the stuff on the wall and everything like that. It's taking a little bit longer of a time than normal. And he's sitting there. Starting a little bit nervous. Doctor comes in. Says, hey, Doc, how are you? Doc sits down. He's like, I've got two things to tell you. The first, you've got cancer. The guy's like, oh my God. What's the second thing? Doctor looks him right in the eye and says, second thing is, you've got Alzheimer. Patient looks at him and says, well, at least I don't have cancer. I love that one. It's a little, a little <laughs> doctor joke for you as you're going into uh, yeah, right? your procedure. Okay, before we get to the exciting, uh, how would you say, semi-aphrodisiatic subject for Kevin of tires, <laughs> let's uh, do some news. I think there's some fun stuff in the news. <laughs> So today's news, everyone, it's all about death. Death and murder and all those great things. Super newsworthy, right? Like that's the stuff that people want to hear about. Car companies are making a deadly mistake with electric vehicles. Hmm. So uh, this one actually talks a lot about um, really that it's fascinating that the United States of America, arguably one of the most advanced countries on the planet. Arguably. They have done a lot of studies worldwide. And while traffic fatalities have gone down worldwide, what do you think has happened in the old US of A? They've not gone down? They've actually gone up when everybody else is going down. Really? So our consummate overachiever status is, is maintained. But uh, rising seven... 7% uh, in fatalities in the first quarter of 2022 alone. So they then started to kind of dig in, all right, what are the things, what are the reasons why people are um, 
are dying more in the United States. So there's a couple of things that are different. If you look at like the car market in the United States versus what it might be in Europe, for instance, right? So uh, you've been to Europe a few times, and I think that you've made some uh, really, really cool observations. So it's a little bit of a guided discovery for everybody. But what do you notice about the cars in Europe versus the cars in the United States? Smaller. They're much smaller, right? So like you don't see you don't see an Escalade over there. Yeah. So so let's say just in general that if we're going driving down the road in our little uh, um, thing that would look like a smart a smart car, like a little Fiat or something like that, and we hit a pedestrian, what's going to happen to the pedestrian? He's going to break the Fiat. Yeah. So either he's going to break the Fiat, or um, he or she would bounce over the over the car, right? So it's kind of a little hop and a jump. Um, and typically what happens is people survive that, believe it or not. But in the United States, if you get hit with an Escalade, what happens? You die. You, you die. Uh, that's exactly right. So typically what happens is you don't go up, you go down. And going down underneath an 8,000 pound vehicle, not great for your life expectancy, right? So a lot of the fatalities are like that, right? So even car to car collisions are huge because there's just so much energy involved in the things hitting. Well, you, and you know what else people like to do to like, say, for example, when I had that Gladiator truck, you put a lift kit on it. You go higher. So, and I, I thought about this because I've actually seen stuff on this before where when a truck is jacked up and it hits a car, the fatalities are way higher because um, they're coming right at their head. Yeah, so the person getting impacted. And you're going an, over, not yep. moving it. And out then of the, the way. vehicle has rollover tendency, right, when it's lifted like that because of yeah. the center of gravity. So here's one thing that I didn't know that was really, really interesting is that electric cars are actually not immune. I thought, you know, we probably talked about this on a couple of episodes that, like, so it's an electric car is low center of gravity, it's heavy, everything like that. So, um, so we thought safe. Like, it's not rolling over, it's not doing anything. But over the last couple of years, what's happened is now we're starting to make electric SUVs and electric trucks. So now we have a oh, higher yeah. center of gravity, and I think it's more like a tank effect, right? So it's this heavy thing, and there's the physics of the, the energy, and it's moving towards you, and like it just bowls everything over. And the, the article had a really interesting take on the F-150 Lightning. So the F-150 Lightning looks just like a regular truck, but what their contention was, well, it's electric. So underneath the hood of an F-150 Lightning, it's storage space. They call it the frunk, right? But if they really wanted to, to try and like save lives and do that, if they'd angled the front of the truck down, if there was a pedestrian hit, then they would have slid up. But they made the front of the truck higher. So now we're going under again. So I thought that was fascinating. Going through going under through everything like that. And then the other thing is, is that the other part about electric cars, you and I both know this firsthand, they are really freaking fast. They're advertised Easy as being fast. really fast. Oh, so now we have jacked up trucks or high trucks that are really, really fast, that are really heavy. Weird that and people I wonder would if this die. Is, this is worse for the driver of those or the person getting hit. I think for the person getting hit, probably. Yeah. Because they are, I think if you're in them, they're safer. But And so is it a, it's a lot of also about people uh, that are on bicycles and pedestrians and that yeah, sort of so thing? Yeah, so there's a lot of, uh, a lot of talking here about pedestrians passing away in the United States. But I also think the other reason that the U.S. has so many deaths is that they... Uh, that in comparison to other countries, and, and especially in Europe, is we do not have a public transit infrastructure. Like, it's cool how you can get around safely on a train in Europe. No, I think there's only really, well, I guess maybe there's three, but for the most part, there's only two cities, I think, in the U.S. that the transit is widely used. That's New York. Yeah, so... And then San Francisco, maybe Chicago, but... I don't think I don't think it's as used as it is. People in Chicago drive. Yeah, like that's one thing with our clients in Chicago that always blows me away is a car will be a year old and have thirty thousand miles on it. Like people right. put miles on cars. It's crazy. Um, but San Francisco has Barton. That's pretty good. Uh, yeah. You know, the thing I thought you were going to say with that story too is. Uh, that for a while, our fatalities, I thought we're going the other way because of Uber and, you know, Uber's another form of 
public transportation in a sense, I guess. Not the same, but it's private transportation. People but that drink, right? Purpose. So now, like, uh, we're gonna have a party coming up, right? So we're gonna have a party for the Canelo fight in a in a few weeks or whatever. Um, we will we will tell everybody they got to come in an Uber so then they can drink and have fun. So there's no chance that anybody drinks and drives because yep. it's safer that way. So the addition of Uber does make it safer, but um, I'll tell you, like that Tesla, it's, it uh, it almost is like teasing you to like go from stoplight to stoplight as fast as you can. Yeah. It is dangerous. I would say that it's one of the few cars that I've driven that scared me a little bit. And I'm not a so fast. Yeah, it was just too much, too and fast. They don't handle that great. Yeah, if it's you're going not, in a straight line, it's okay, but you start yeah, to go but around. They're heavy. Curves. Yeah, it doesn't. It uh, it just scared me a little bit, and I love to go fast. Um, so yeah, so I thought that was a really interesting article where everybody else is going down and we're going up. Um, not even close to my favorite article about death. Well, it's not technically a death, but I just want to I want to read the headline. <sighs> Hyundai dealership customer shot by employee in Ohio. Please say. Oh, I had a few people send me this. <laughs> so apparently, a uh, an employee at a Hyundai store shot a customer after a, after a disagreement. So uh, Chris and I um, would like to kind of offer this to everybody. I would like to think maybe we could just kind of have a discussion in the chat about... There what? is no reason you should shoot a customer, first of all. Well... There is no reason whatsoever. But if we just wanted to have a little bit of fun... <laughs> like we're not... That we're not, Sam... That, uh, well, I won't even say that. Sam Kinison joke. Yeah. But uh, what would be a reason if, you know, there... There is no reason, but if there was a reason, yes. posting right. comments. We do not encourage the shooting of customers. You could probably make have a you case. Ever, have you ever seen an advisor and a customer get in a fight? It's super awkward to me. Have you seen it? Yeah. Oh, tell me the situation. Oh, uh, it, was, uh, it was about paying the bill. And they ended up getting in a thing where they were like nose to nose. Never saw fists um, going, but literally. And the funny thing is the advisor... Uh, third degree bat, black belt, everything like that. Like he lives for that kind of stuff. And the guy was getting in his face and it was just a terrible, terrible thing. I don't know what stopped it ultimately at the end of the day. I don't remember why they didn't fight, but it was literally- oh, they, they didn't fight. They didn't fist fight, but oh, they were nose to nose. I've seen it twice where they fought. Okay, so I've never seen a customer get punched. So we used to, when I was a lot attendant, uh, there was a service advisor there that was um, what what a couple of us would do, which is terrible. But we going down to dispatch from the front to the of the service department. There's a hallway, and then the hallway would turn left, and then there was these wood stairs that were built like, but they weren't uh, attached to the concrete. So there was a gap, like when you'd step on the last stair, it would hit the concrete a little bit. So there's like an inch gap there. And what we would do is we would wait for this advisor. He was an old guy uh, and mean, too. He was, he was uh, I would say, mid-50s. Not old now, very young, actually. But then he was old. Uh, he would turn that corner and go down the stairs, and then we would come behind him, run, and we would jump over the stairs onto the last one, and we would say, incoming, and then it would smack and it would scare the living, Gosh. the living life out of the guy because he was he was mean, and we we thought it was funny. But that same guy, he had the last desk before that hallway. And uh, one time, I was I was a porter, I wasn't an advisor yet. One time, he threw a customer through the window. Wow. Yeah. And you want to you want to know the funny part? There's a funny part. Very funny part. Okay, I want to know. He didn't get fired. What do you do there? What's that write-up got to look like? Do not. Well, I was throw a porter, so I wasn't windows. in on that meeting. But wow, I was I was blown away that he uh, that you can throw somebody through a window was, and not get fired. Yeah, he was still there the next day. It's but the that 90s, probably. Though. Yeah, that, those were the days, huh? Yeah. And uh, so pretty funny, but I've seen I, that. I do like to think about. I have this. never ever shot someone. I don't think I've ever felt like it was 
appropriate to find a customer. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I've maybe felt like I wanted to not be there. <laughs> <laughs> I felt claustrophobic. Yeah, I can, I can think of two times where I elevated in, in, as a service advisor too, um, as an elevator, as a service advisor, elevated and like had a yelling match with a customer um, two times in my life and both times I was totally wrong and ended up going back and apologizing for my poor behavior to the customer and they said no problem. And they were sorry too. Um, but you feel all kinds of terrible after that kind of stuff happens. But in, in the shooting instance, so the guy got shot in the leg, um, but I can just kind of think what I think probably happened is uh, the advisor's like, okay, so I just want to let you know you're going to get a survey after all this is done and it's going to ask about your experience. And I'd really like a five-star survey. And the customer's like, no, no, it wasn't a good service. It wasn't five stars. I'm, I'm going to give you two stars, the advisor. Did you say two stars? <laughs> Not five stars. You're going to be two stars? Yeah, in that situation, I think it's okay to fight the customer. Yeah. Uh, wait right here. <laughs> A guy disappears, comes back, and shoots him in the leg. Um, but maybe that wasn't it. Could have been something else. Could have been about uh, one of those things. Too like, bad we don't have a reporter out in the field that we could send to uh, do a deep dive into this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm here from Service Drive Revolution, and yeah. I'd like to ask some questions. <laughs> what coach would you pick to be our reporter in the well, field? Our coaches. Uh, Probably Grant, I guess. I think Grant would be really good as the reporter on the field. on the radio or whatever. Yeah. Um, I also think that, like, for weather. Vicky would be for, tenacious. But for weather, I would pick Vicky. <laughs> yeah. I've been here in New Orleans, and, like, everything's blowing away. That poor girl has so such bad luck with weather. Christian, guess what? What? Tire season. It is coming, it's isn't it? in the game. Yeah. I think that uh, just in us talking about this before the snow flies... Um, get ahead of it, folks. How many, how many, uh, people do you think in the South don't understand what happens in the North with winter tires and storing tires and all that? Yeah. Hold on. Let me do the math and carry the six, <laughs> all of them, <laughs> yeah. all of them don't understand what but it's we're not like. really going to talk about that. No, this is more... That uh, is a thing. Like, you should store the wheels and control the situation and put them into parts inventory and all that. But best retention tool. We're not going to talk about that. No. No, let's not. Because the people in the South would be like... Oh, I heard a funny Irish joke the other day, and since we're both Irish, I feel like I can tell this. How many Irishmen does it... It's more Irish racism. Here yeah. We go. go ahead. Uh, how many Irishmen does it take to uh, screw in a light bulb? How many? Ten. One to hold the light bulb, and the other nine to drink until the room spins. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cuts. tire season. Get in the game. How do people get in the game for tire season, Christian? Well, I think a lot of it has to do, if I'm an advisor, what I would want to think about is, what are the things that are keeping me from being really good at tires? Uh, so I've got a little bit of a list that I've compiled. Um, so I think that maybe my, um, my list is way more like, why are we not in the game? And if you just do the opposite of all these things that I'm saying, you'll be in the tire game. So we could Good, do that. Fair enough. Okay, um, what's at the top of your list? Internally, we perceive that tires at the dealership are more expensive. You're saying that our perception is off. That is correct, Mundo. Explain. Correct, Mundo. So... So what I would tell you is that for a while, uh, dealerships um, were not really into the tire game. So the prices were terrible. Wait, I, uh, I would contend that there's a lot of dealerships that aren't in the tire game. They might Even be. now. Um, we do not do tires. <laughs> we should tell that story. Have we told that story before? I don't know if we can. Why can't we? I don't care. <laughs> Everyone's like, what are they laughing about? <laughs> uh, God, this happens to me all the time. Somebody was asking us, they'd opened a shop that was an extension or a satellite or something, and it wasn't making money, it was losing money, and they didn't have any traffic. And they didn't have any idea how to make money. 
Yeah. Or no, they, they wanted they wanted everything. our advice, and we're all sitting around a table at one of their other places, somewhere in the Midwest. And I don't know. We came up with the idea of selling tires, <laughs> and then they go, well, "We, the guy, the head of the group, right? Yeah, vice president, or whatever, goes, bam on the desk. We do not sell tires." And it was like this. And I was like, "So you'll think about it." <laughs> I know. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. It was like you agitated it right immediately after. Yeah. I was so proud of you. That kind of stuff makes me laugh. Yeah. But it was a big conference room table. And I remember, like, I was on one end of the table. He was all the way to the other side. Remember that? Like, he was at the end as far away from us as he, he could be. He was also short. Yeah, he's a little feller. What you're saying is, a lot of times, we're not in the tire game because we don't have the right perception of what the game is. We don't know what the game is. We think the game is something else, but it's actually a little simpler than what we perceive but to get in the game, you got to see the game. Yeah, you got to play in the right league, right? You got to wear the right outfit. You got to have the right mindset. You got to show up. You got to be in the game. And so a lot of times, tires are an afterthought in the sense that we perceive that customers go somewhere else because they're cheaper. That's right. And I mean, just think about that for a second, what that says about you, not you, but you as a person in this industry that a customer would go somewhere else to save $20. Frightening. Like that's the value you bring is the, the one, what's the one thing that customers can't get back? They can't get back time. So they'll take the thing that they can't get back and drive somewhere else and waste more of the thing they can't get back to save $20 because you, so if you're losing customers over price, usually it's, be, it's your perception, it's not the price, because most of the time when you shop, the prices are uh, very comparable. Yeah. It's not, there. you know, it's not like it's a hundred bucks most of the time. So the perception is that we lose the customers because of price, but the truth is we lose the customers because you're not in the game and you're not playing to win, you're indifferent to it. You're not in the game, right? And you could make Would a, you agree with that? 100%. And you can make a really strong case. If you possess the car, that the price really doesn't matter. Like, oh, you got it. You have the You car. have the captive audience. What if you throw the customer's keys on the roof? Also a 1990. We're having flashback moments, right? That's so great. <laughs> Give me my car back. Give me my trade back. Keys are on the roof. Like literally some of the most yeah. amazing things happen. Okay, the next thing is the inventory. We're not in the tire game because we, well, we don't have the inventory. I'm trying to frame this the way that you were saying it. We don't have the inventory because we're not in the game. If we were in the game, we'd have the inventory. It'd be a, it would be a focus. Yeah. So, so one of the things, um, which has really been, it's been good for me. It's been a lot of fun. But uh, since Cliff and I have gone down this road and working with parts, parts departments, old. and did you like the logo for Parts Old? Oh, I loved it. I hope everybody's seen that logo. It's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, it's pretty awesome. That's official. That that's the. I was trying to email it to you, but uh, the file's too big. I got to put it in Dropbox. Yeah, it's super cool. I think it's gonna go. Uh, it's gonna go really well. But um, if you want to see, you know, what it's like and what the overall. Um, feeling towards tires is from a dealership, I want you to walk into the parts manager's office, sit down, slide him a cup of coffee, and say, what do you think about tires? And just watch their face just for a second. Because... You can turn off the sound. Just by their facial expression, you can tell what they really mean. Yeah, not and what they're typically saying. you'll get the eye roll, and then you'll get people say, I hate, the parts manager will hate tires. Right? Because they consider it a tremendous nuisance. So you gotta have the inventory. You gotta, you gotta be in the have game. the inventory. You gotta you gotta figure out a place. I get it that tires are big and cumbersome and a pain in the butt to move and everything like that, but but not having the tires means you're not in the game, and that's a terrible idea. The next thing is 
that we perceive or it's true, one of the two. It could be the perception or it could be the truth, but both are a problem. Sometimes perception becomes reality. Have you ever heard that? So sometimes we perceive it into reality. So yeah. we perceive it or it is reality or we perceive it into reality. But either way, it's a problem is that we uh, believe technicians don't want to do tires. Yeah, that would definitely be the perception. I also... If I've I, heard that one a lot. If I can just go back to parts managers, please do not run an inventory stocking level of any tire that has an odd number in it. That's it. Don't have three tires. Biggest pet peeve. It's like having one rotor. Uh, back, to te back to tax. Wait, so you just, because one time a parts manager only had three of something and you were inconvenienced, now the whole audience has to hear... What if they've never thought about it before? What if that was just good sound advice? God, I hope parts managers aren't that ill-equipped. There's a lot of sharp folk out there. Techs don't want to do it. And yeah. so there's two answers there. Okay, so I've got one. What's the one? Oh, I was thinking make it, make it that it pays right. I was thinking uh, hire a tech to... Do that tires just do and tires? Yeah, that's a good idea. I like, <laughs> forget what I said. Well, I don't, I don't know sometimes that it's the best use of some of the A or like really good B techs. It's not the best use. Like they don't need to be doing tires. We can yeah. get somebody else to do it. Tire and alignment tech is genius. But we got to have it available. Brilliant. Um, also, okay. if they're the tire and alignment check, or tire and alignment person, they would never let a tire install go without an alignment. We're coming to the end here. The last one that we had on our list. Yeah. This is important. And you know who, who historically has done a good job of this? Honda. Mm. Okay. But most of the time, and this is tied back to the one with the parts manager and the inventory, is we have one option. We don't have a good, better, best. And so a lot of times... Customers will pick the middle option no matter what. And we perceive that we're losing customers over price, but that's because we're giving them one option. But it does pay to have the option of those tires that sound like, what are those tracks on a tank? Tread? What no, do they call those? I don't know, but they're really loud, right? Yeah. So you can have the cheap tires and it kind of explain that and then have the really expensive tires and then the middle one is where most customers will land but the uh the choice in the options make the customer perceive that the prices are lower because there is a lower price it's just not a tire that they want it's not a some good customers option. will pick it but yeah. you have them sign a 10 page disclosure that noise and whatever is, <laughs> you know it's funny how fast they get noisy those are really cheap tires like hundreds of miles and they're noisy yeah. But there's a, there's a customer for that tire. But having the choices, the good, better, best, having options kind of takes price off the table in a few ways. But the main one is the customer gets to choose their own adventure. Yeah. They get to write their own story. And it's less about price because it's like, well, do you want the race car ones? Do you want the middle one or do you want the ones that you don't want? Yeah. I used to love those Choose Your Own Adventure books. Do you read those a lot? No. Um, but I, I mean, I appreciate it. Yeah. I, I worked backwards. Tire season's coming. Let's get in the game. Let's recap really quick. Perception, right? Number two is having the inventory. Number three is having the text to do it. Maybe not making your A text do it or having the right mix, right? Quick loop text can do it, that sort of thing. And uh, good, better, best, having options for the customers. Those are all uh, great ideas and a path for you to have the best tire season, best winter ever. Yeah. I wish we had that uh, voiceover from the EA sports guy. It's in the game. It's in the game, yeah. yeah he's good really good, isn't he? Thanks, everybody. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time on Service Drive Revolution. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching this episode of Service Job Revolution. We're uploading new stuff every day, so make sure you subscribe and click the bell icon so you don't miss out.
If you have a question you'd like us to answer on the show, call 8333-ASK-SDR and we'll answer your question on the show. That's 8333-ASK-SDR. For special deals on our books and training, head over to offers.chriscollinsinc.com. Now that's offers.chriscollinsinc.com. I'm Chris Collins and I'll see you in the next video.